Have you ever seen a frog jumping? If yes, then could you ever estimate the distance of its next jump? And if not, then let's experience it now only. Here there are three frogs and all of them have a different style of jumping. Frog 1 always jumps a little more but constant than its previous jump. Frog 2 always jumps in any length, it has nothing to do with its previous jump. Whereas Frog 3 always jumps a little less but constant than its previous jump. Can you tell me which frog's jump would be easier to determine? For the second frog probably it's not possible but for the rest too we can predict the jump and if I ask why? Then an obvious answer will be because they follow a pattern, right? On similar lines we have an interesting topic in math called arithmetic progression which deals with a particular type of pattern and when there is a specific pattern then prediction is always right or we must say perfect. That prediction in mathematical term called formula. We have already made several sessions on it. I would suggest you to please go through it once and learn the entire chapter within an hour. Today we'll focus more on its formulae and the confusion or difficulty that we face while solving problems. AP is a sequence of numbers follow a particular pattern and can be in increasing and decreasing order. Each number of the sequence is known as a term of the AP. The amount by which the next term is increased or decreased is called common difference. There are two formulae in this chapter. Do you remember them? The first one is TN and the second one is SN. The whole chapter revolves around these two formulae but still there is a lot of confusion about the terms, the number of terms, the sum of terms and much more. This is a small try to help you all in understanding and applying the formulae. Just give me some time. Look at this arrangement of pots. In each pot, there are some marbles put in the order of arithmetic progression, starting from 5 marbles in the first pot. Now I will try to relate it with our formula, ok? Let me randomly select a pot. The number of marbles in the pot is represented by Tn, where n is random. T means term and Tn represents nth term. And I'm saying it random because we selected it randomly. But if I say it was the fifth pot, then one would easily say that it is T5, which is 13. Now I guess you must have understood the meaning of n and Tn. So n tells you the position or the number of terms where tn represents the value of the term at that particular position. So here the place of pot is nth and the number of marbles in that pot is tn. We may select any range like if I select this range then the very first pot in that range will automatically become a that is the first term of ap. And the increment or the decrement in the next term is represented by D. Regarding SN, here S means sum and SN means the value we get after summing the first n terms. In our case, it is the sum of the marbles in the first n pots. If I say S5, it is the total number of marbles in the first 5 pots, whereas T5 is the number of marbles only in the 5th pot. If you have understood till now, then tell me the way you would find the total number of marbles from 5th to 10th pots both inclusive. Only two formulae but still confused. Is your confusion how to start or which formula to use or how to use? Probably you have all three doubts, right? Now I will tell you the solution and if I am going wrong then please correct me. What I'll do is I'll first calculate S10 which is the sum of marbles in all 10 pots from the first one and subtract the sum of marbles in the first 4 pots. So I will also calculate S4. Therefore a total number of marbles from 5th to 10th pots will be calculated as S10 minus S4, right? There is one more way by which you can solve this. First find the 5th term and then the 10th term which is actually the last term of the range. Then we have 
S6 which is equal to A plus L upon 2 into 6. Now this is the average of the first and the last term multiplied by the number of terms. This formula is derived by the original formula only which you can watch in our previous sessions. Like if I consider my Tn as the last term of the sequence A plus L multiplied by n by 2 which is nothing but the average of the first and last term into the number of terms. Now let's see another example. Suppose I borrow 100 rupees from you which I have to return in 12 months period with interest of 100 rupees in total. The payment of each month is in such a way that every installment increases by rupees 10. So can you tell me what will be the amount of my first installment? Now, this is something that I would write on my rough page to get the idea about all this. Okay, so the first bubble is my first installment, that is first month, and the last installment, that is in the twelfth month. Now, this means I have to make 12 payments, which increases by rupees 10 each month, and all this must total up to 900. So, the conclusion I can draw is I have to use the formula of Sn given n equals 12, where S12 is the sum of all 12 payments and is 900. I have to find my first payment means the first number of the sequence which is A, where the common difference D is 10. The problem is solved. Friends you can see that for simplifying this it would hardly take 1 minute, but to understand the question you will need more than that amount of time. So please give time in understanding the question. I hope you understood this one very well. So can I ask you something on this question? Okay. If I say the installment decreases by 10 rupees, in that case, what would be the value of D? Minus 10. Okay. So one of the most types of question is asked to find the number of terms in some interval like first three digit odd numbers, multiple of 5 from 50 to 100 or some other. So note down some points over here. When the range is given as from, include both the end points. And when it is set between, then exclude those end points. To calculate the number of terms, we again have a formula. But don't worry, we are not going to introduce a new one. The formula of Tn only is used to calculate the number of terms. For example, how many multiples of 4 from 10 to 40? So the first multiple is 12 because 10 cannot be divided by 4. And the last multiple is 40, right? So take Tn which is 40, A as 12 and D equals 4 and find out N. So you get N equals 8. That means there are 8 multiples of 4 from 10 to 40. For the same example by using between. So how many multiples of 4 between 10 to 40? Since 10 will automatically be excluded as it is not the multiple of 4 but will also exclude 40. So the last multiple or say Tn equals 36, right? And therefore 36 equals 12 plus n minus 1 into 4 and this time we get n as 7. This way you can find the number of terms, the sum of terms and the value of any term by using only two formulas. I am sure it will improve your skill of problem solving. If you are stuck on any question on this topic then to know the key point please write to us will help you in understanding the problem. Thank you for watching, keep watching, keep learning.